Our next witness is Ralph Hill. Dr. Hill is the Executive Vice President for the American College of Obstetrician and Gynecologists. He's a past president of the Association of Professors of Gynecology and Obstetrics and a past president of the Pacific Coast Fertility Society. ACOG is a professional association of medical doctors specializing in obstetrics and gynecology in the United States. It has a membership of over 49,000 and represents 90% of U.S. board certified obstetrician gynecologists. Welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair, person, woman, for allowing us. We, we actually like women. Actually, it's interesting that I'm following Dr. <laughs> Gottlieb. <laughs> since Dr. Gottlieb usually follows me in the delivery room. <laughs> we appreciate very much the opportunity. President Bush does too. Yes, that's true. Uh, I've been the ACOG Executive Vice President since 1993 when I left the University of Hawaii to come here to Washington, D.C. I can tell you that our organization is strongly supportive of health and information technology. As a matter of fact, our last executive board meeting, which was just recently held in July, we had an expert come in and talk to us for over an hour. And the main thrust is how can we get all OBGYNs in the United States into health and information technology. As part of that, our organization has made our antepartum record, our women's health record, all of those free to any electronic vendor that would like to use them. We will prepare them, we will make them available to them at no cost, because we feel this is important. But the problem with HIT is that it is not matured to the level where most of our fellows who are in small practices can use these systems. They're costly, they're not interoperable, they cannot take their health record into a hospital that has a different platform base and use them. This is a problem we see, the lack of ability for us to move across the various platforms. And while HIT will save the insurers a lot of money, it is yet to save our members money. The costs involved are still excessive, as you've heard from our previous testimony, and the whole problem that we run into with confidentiality. These are very important because these are sensitive records. And in our specialty, as with Dr. Gottlieb, we deal with a lot of extremely sensitive issues. And we need to make certain that these records, even though they may be transferred across, they're flexible enough to accommodate state privacy laws and the patients kneeling with HIPAA. HIPAA, of course, is extremely important and we're very supportive of HIPAA because many of our women have many issues that they would not like to have on the latest tabloid in the uh, supermarket. Forty percent, as you've already heard, of deliveries in this country are paid by Medicaid, and yet there is nothing in Medicaid that helps support an electronic medical record, and yet we're being told that within the next couple of years, fellows who do not use Medicaid, electronic medical records will be punished. We're seeing not only the problem of increasing the need for the use, but a decreasing in the ability to afford this type of care. These are problems which are compelling reasons that physicians need to have the electronic record, but nothing to help them support and pay for this. Now we all know that the clinical benefit of the electronic medical record is great. In one of our groups at the Massachusetts General Hospital in uh, Massachusetts, they have an outstanding medical record which they've put together, which allows patients to be seen in any office related to their physicians and to bring that record into the hospital so that if the patient is, has a problem in pregnancy, this record is there the physician who sees the patient in the emergency room or sees the patient in the hospital can immediately pull up this record and can take care of the patient for her care and for the care of her infant. Unfortunately, this is not true throughout the medical record and the electronic medical record businesses. Representative Schuler has identified the problem and all I can say is amen to what you ran into because that's what our fellows see. The records are not adaptable across many, many areas. This is a problem by blocking this. 
I would like to say that H.R. 637 is a good start to guide us forward in this as we develop incentives for physicians to purchase HIT and to seek consensus on important privacy issues. This is a massive undertaking that requires physicians to trust their investment in HIT and for the patients to trust that their sensitive health information is protected. Thank you very much for the opportunity to testify, and ACOG is more than willing to assist you in any way that we can.